save game review hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're finally back with some more of your save games that i'm gonna review and most importantly we're finally back with 1.36 save games after i gave you boys a little bit of time to uh you know play 136 games uh before i could go ahead and review them so the save games that we have for today are the Korea campaign right here by It's Taylor uh, in 1801. Then we have the Saxe Lauenburg to hand over to Germany campaign by Iria uh, 1806. So pretty much end game campaigns right here. And then of course, what will be a 136 uh, save game review without a Byzantium campaign by Giambo X right here. Now this is not that long. It's only 100 uh, years in game time. But of course, we're going to jump into all of them and see what's up. Now, personally, I'm most excited about the Biz campaign as I'm sure a lot of you boys are so that's where we're gonna leave it for last that's right we're gonna jump into this korea campaign right here and uh go the other way around so yeah without further ado here's our first 1.36 save game this korea campaign in 1801 Let's jump in. All right, all right, here we are in our uh, not so little Korea campaign. And I think you guys can notice the same things that I'm noticing right off the bat, that this Korea is huge. And I uh, I can honestly say I'm pretty satisfied with the borders that I'm seeing right here. So uh, yeah, obviously a massive Korea here right off the bat. Huge, so many armies, dude. All right, we're gonna get into everything, uh, you know, step by step over here. Let's just take a look at the great power rank. Obviously 8,600 dev almost, man. Very, very large. You know, Spain, they're not a pushover neither is austria but uh yeah massive development over here economic hegemon as well which is really really nice to see and uh yeah that's the first thing we took a look at very clean borders man very clean borders obviously this player is not a fan of uh, border gore let's go into the coalition map mode to see if anything you know sort of stands out right here but i don't think so man really the border goriest thing i can see right here is this one province or uh, is these couple of provinces over here i guess uh he went for the gold mine uh that's right so uh yeah really that's my only complaint about the borders not not even a uh, complaint at all so yeah massive korea man looking very very massive either way let's jump into the uh government reforms right here take a look at them real quick we got the hermit kingdom still which is actually pretty nice strength and noble privileges the examination system for the advisors and uh, okay this is a pretty good you know semi unique ish one strength and confusion bureaucracy is pretty nice um then we got righteous army very good for the fort defense uh royal decree meritocratic Lucky and Proviso, not something you see too often, but definitely no complaints about that. Six books of the Republic, the Tasemwa, political absolutism. So yeah, very, very nice government reforms right here. Going back over to the court tab, we can see level five advisors, obviously very, very good. Very nice heir and consort and ruler, by the way. So a pretty good family you got going over here. Uh, yeah, we already took a look at the government tab. So uh, lots of nice modifiers active, lots of cultures accepted and promoted. Of course, he's got the Sino-Korean culture too, which I'll get into later. Going into the diplomacy tab, Tab, we can see an alliance with the commonwealth and spain not really needed but not something that's negative either so everything is looking pretty standard right here very nice diplo rep going over into the economy tab massive massive income very very good that's all i can say about that booming income from production now you would of course trade you would uh, expect trade income to be a little bit higher over here but uh you know depending on the merchant setup and we can see there's only three merchants obviously that wasn't a very heavy focus but even with um this not being as high as it should be i really have no complaints about the income balance is looking massive a very nice income from gold so many gold mines most of them developed so yeah things are looking pretty good right here going over into the trade income yeah trade is only 20 percent of income which is you know not that good i guess but once again i go back to the can complaining part massive goods produced almost 100 percent goods produced furnace is active everywhere We're looking really really strong right here that's excellent tech obviously way ahead of time uh as korea that's what you do pretty much the entirety of the game right here uh then we got the ideas here all right yeah uh infrastructure aristo maybe this player was uh emperor of china or something yeah infrastructure i guess it's pretty good for tall gameplay here with korea got some nice policies with aristo as well so these wouldn't be my openers but nothing really bad to say about that humanist offensive admin quality diplo naval yeah so depending on your focuses these are decent i would go with other ones maybe go with some more tall playing focused one for, uh, for korea for example i don't know throw in freaking uh innovative over there or something like that but yeah okay idea group choice not my favorite but it's definitely very nice obviously Obviously, you know, missions, all of them completed right here. Super, super strong. Uh, let's take a look at the policies. So we got those. Let's see which ones you can activate. Yeah, you, you could definitely activate like, well, I guess the Diplo ones, you don't really get to use that much. Yeah, not a lot of economic things here I can notice. See, no economic or trade right here, which I would definitely replace those two with some of these right here. 
uh, with naval or aristo or infrastructure, maybe even humanists. So yeah, definitely not a big focus on making money, even though so much money is being made. Uh, way below GovCap, that's always super nice to see. Everything looking good right here. 250% religious unity, harmony max. Uh, probably many harmonized religions over here. Yeah, as we can see right here, all of these are harmonized. Very nice. Uh, military, almost 1.7 million force limit, which is looking really nice. Uh, combat with this 40. These uh, stacks right here are... Uh, e yeah. Yeah, they're decent if you don't want to run full artillery, I guess. But yeah, very nice generals as well. Okay, discipline, uh, very nice morale, uh, nice combat modifiers, obviously, for the boats and for the army's full professionalism. Very, very good right there. Uh, no subjects. And in the estates, let's go back to the absolutism here. Max 115, max absolutism. So you can definitely get away with uh, giving out some more privileges to these guys right here. He's got the diplo and mill points, but no admin points. So you can definitely give out three more privileges and still not lose out on uh, any absolutism and really for a playthrough we're going only this big where you're not doing a world conquest you don't even need 100 absolutism you can get away with like 80 or 70 by this point you know so definitely lots more privileges that can be active but uh i'm not gonna take away too many points on that okay that's that let me take a look at the cultures right here uh we got the sino korean right where korean joins all of these guys so everything is looking pretty good over there. Obviously, this was colonized by Muscovy. That's why it's Muscovy. Then they conquered this from Muscovy. Uh, things are looking pretty good right there. So that's the cultures. That's what I wanted to see. Uh, like I said, not too heavy a focus on uh, making money. And everyone is standing in Korea, I guess, because all of these provinces are like really high debt, right? Yeah, obviously. So yeah, really what I would change for this campaign is pick up economic and trade. But aside from that, uh, things are looking pretty good. Let's go over into the uh, state staff. Actually, everything full stated. Very, very nice. That's what I like to see. You know, you haven't done Sakhalin over here, but uh, no big deal. Uh, no trade companies or anything. So everything right here that we're seeing is uh, pretty much at the core of the country. I'm guessing everything that's not stated is the stuff that's been uh, conquered last or maybe just forgotten about. But uh, navies are looking very, very nice as well. Korea has a deceptively strong navy, by the way. And this player buffed it up, obviously, with naval. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, you know, I like seeing a focus on naval. Lots of light ships protecting trade. So uh, always nice to see. Now let's go over into the buildings, I think. Market is the stock exchanges. I guess they can't be built anywhere else. Yeah, all of these buildings are like full, right? Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you know, they've been built everywhere that they can be built, I'm guessing. Uh, can't really see because uh, all of the provinces are so, so built up. So definitely a very, very fo heavy focus on buildings right here. Uh, taking a look at the town halls literally everywhere. This is how you play boys and girls this is how you play that's what i like to see workshops look at this very nice very nice uh construction of workshops grand temples lots of them as well perfect right there you missed a province but you missed a province but uh yeah dockyards not that many let's take a look at the grand shipyards a lot definitely a heavy focus on the navy this campaign even level eight forts obviously you know maybe if this player was uh, the mandate holder this would be needed but uh yeah upgrading forts never never a bad thing naval batteries let's take a look at those let's go into the manufacturers finally oh you love to see it, man. You love to see it. So no complaints at all on the buildings, especially after I saw this and uh, this right here. So uh, yeah, very, very good on the buildings front as well. I have no negative things to say about that. Autonomy obviously lowered everywhere. Things are looking very, very good for this uh, Korea playthrough right here. Very nice if I do say so myself. Now, as for the complaints, uh, you know, I've been touching on that a little bit since the start of this, uh, you know, review, but... I really don't have any complaints, man. What what are you going to complain about over here, right? I guess my only complaint would be, you know, not picking up economic or trade to make even more money. But everything is working out completely fine. Uh, income is massive and things are looking very, very uh, stable and a very nice campaign right here. Obviously, strict goal in mind. I don't know if it was for any achievements or something like that. I don't think the player stated that. But uh, yeah, things are looking very, very sweet right here. All right, so that's uh, that campaign right there. Let's just take a look at the timelines. Sometimes I forget to do these things. But uh, yeah obviously this is korea let's go on the fast mode right here so not a lot of expansion right here at the start huh staying pretty still for the initial 10 years 20 years yeah i guess this is just tall gameplay right here no colonizing or anything like that there we go uh john Zhu war in like after 30 years now the expansion starts okay so we move into the tribes right here a little bit in japan and Ainu right here pushing into these guys so very slow i guess methodical expansion ming hasn't blown up yet there we go this is gonna knock them down we got beijing right here ah uh, there we go ming blows up expansion over here expansion in japan all of these uh chinese tags get released slow very slow expansion that's all i'm gonna say about that but really you know if that was your goal man nothing nothing to knock on over there no expansion in china just yet focus on japan there we go we fought oirat shun over here a little bit ashikaga still exists expanding into these guys over here a little bit 
Definitely, you know, not the fastest expansion, probably actually one of the slowest expansions I've seen, but, you know, it's nothing negative when the end result ended up looking so good. So, yeah, there we go, a little bit of stagnation right here at this point, maybe cleaning up Japan, doing some deving or stuff like that, slow conquering, developing the provinces after you conquer them, I'm guessing that's what's going on over here. There we go, pushing into China a little bit more, pretty much got almost all of the northern portion of China. Ming is expanding over here, but they just got ate up some of these provinces left right here. There we go, some more expansion over in China. I'm guessing expansion is sort of going to ramp up now after Absolutism, although if we're going, you know, the same way that we've been going so far, uh, it's not going to be too fast. There we go, China has been wrapped up, just Shu and Yu left right here. Uh, there we go, a little bit of expansion in this direction. There we go, a little bit in the south, working on Indochina right now. Just about 100 years left to go with a lot still left to conquer. There we go. A war versus Russia. Taking a major chunk out of them. Shoe popped out for some reason. Uh, I don't know why. There we go. Even more expansion into Russia. Wow. Russia is actually really strong this campaign, man. Look at where they went. This was a really good campaign for AI Russia, but Korea had to stop them. So, um, you know, obviously it would be good when they're facing the player. But yeah, more expansion over here. Shoe still exists. Yeah, there we go. Southeast Asia. Bengal's right here. Pushed over to the coast of Makron, as we can see. Just got a little more provinces to take right there. There we go. More expansion in India and in uh, Khorasan here from Russia taking provinces. There we go. We got the Malay Peninsula unlocked. And we're nearing the end right here. Not a lot of expansion. And then that's it. So yeah, that's what that's the timeline, man. Looks like uh, looks to be a very uh, nice, a very stable Korea run. Look at all of these provinces, man. Yeah. So this was definitely, you know, even though Korea is so massive, as we can see, boys, this was definitely a tall campaign, man. This was definitely a tall campaign. That's why the conquest was so slow. Take a little bit, work on the provinces, build the relevant buildings, bump it up, you know, dev it in whichever category you need to dev it in based on the trade, good, based on the terrain and stuff like that. Look, so many provinces are like more than 30 development, which what I would consider uh, a high dev province, man. Look, oh my God, that's just awesome. That's just awesome. Look, all of these provinces up here are 30 dev, man. And even the other ones aren't anything to, you know, laugh at. So definitely I would consider this a tall Korea campaign. Uh, slow expansion, developing of provinces, and I actually don't have anything negative to say about this campaign, even though I had a little bit of nitpicks here and there. So uh, yeah, I'm going to rate this first Korea campaign a 5 out of 5. Let's move on with the next one. Good job. So yeah, that was our first save game. This next one right here, Saxe Lauenburg, a weird pick to hand over to Germany. Uh, 1806, once again, pretty much an end, uh, end date campaign. But uh, yeah, I've been doing these save game reviews every three weeks. Let me know if you want to see them every two weeks. We can uh, bump up the quantity of these a little bit if you guys want to. But yeah, let's jump into this next campaign and see what Germany is looking like in 1806. All right, all right, here we are in our uh, little Germany campaign in uh, 1806. Started off as Saxe Lauenburg uh, in these provinces right here, I think, uh, or in that province right there. And uh, yeah, went to Hanover, went to Germany, but man, the only thing I can notice right off the bat here is by 1806, this isn't a very big Germany at all. In fact, it's not that good at all, man, I'm sorry to say, but uh, you don't even have all of the German culture provinces, right? It's like, you know, at least you would go with like German Empire borders by this point or something like that. The Germany mission tree gives such massive claims that, uh, yeah, honestly, I'm not liking the, this expansion so far, man. Even if this was a tall campaign, like a really, really uh, tall campaign focused heavily on developing and stuff like that and maybe role playing it with some client states or something like that. This is still not big enough, man. Still not big enough. Yeah, uh, these provinces are really, really highly developed, but... Yeah, I, st I still think there needs to be just a slightly more conquest, man. At least, you know, get all of North Germany and South Germany or maybe all of the German culture group lands or I mean, maybe something like this. You know, if I was doing a super, super tall Germany campaign, I would I would at least own all of this right here, man. Something like that. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll jump in. Obviously, I'm seeing really high dev provinces, so it definitely was a tall campaign. But uh, yeah, borders still too small. Either way, going into the Great Powers rank, we're number two on the Great Powers list after revolutionary turkey all righty then the ottomans went revolutionary apparently so did the timurids the revolution is very very active right here uh turkey is the target uh so yeah there are a couple of revolutionary nations um we got uh provence being revolutionary as well but either way yeah pretty very extremely high dev in fact for uh just owning this little land these provinces are insanely highly developed uh, economic hegemon as well all right let's go over here go into the court bad ruler uh decent air decent consort right here level four advisors we'll go into the economy and see if you can actually run level five ones but you definitely want to have level five by the end point in the game going over into the government tab obviously the empire uh burgundian and walloon promoted everything else accepted that's looking pretty good right there in the diplomacy tab we're at war with venice 
actually, or we're not. Attacker against... Oh, I'm, I'm on... I'm at Florence. That's right, I'm on Florence. Uh, either way. Uh, yeah, allied to Scandinavia, Great Britain, and the Netherlands. Yeah, why? Why are you allied to the Netherlands? Either way, we got a uh, trade steering from Ferrara. Yeah, everything is looking pretty standard right here. 200% improved relations? Jesus. I, I don't see that too often right there in the economy tab. But man, economy is looking really good. You can honestly run level 5 advisors. Lots of income from production. Obviously not that much from trade, but I'm not going to knock trade because the borders aren't that big either, either way. Uh, very high income from tax as well. Something you would expect with borders this size. And uh, But yeah, for a country this size, the economy is actually really, really good. Uh, trade, yeah, everything expected right here. Goods produced 40%. That's pretty decent, I guess, for a country of this size. Tech, ahead of tech in every category. Ideas, offensive humanist. Wait, you stuck with sex at Lauenberg ideas? Why? Siege of... Yeah, why? Like, Hanover and Germany ones are better. Either way, is there a dev discount here or something like that? There isn't a dev discount. Okay, offensive humanist. You don't really need humanist this early. You don't actually need humanist or religious at all for a nation of this size. I'm guessing for the policies. Uh, but with what? Policies with what? Land attrition and rest? I don't know. Innovative is good. Diplo is good. Offensive is good. Espionage. What are you doing with espionage this late? Yeah, offensive. Well, I'm trying to look at the policies here. Figure out any really good ones. But there aren't that many, man. <laughs> Yeah, and too many forts as well. Defensive is good, quality, economic, I guess. Yeah, if you're going for a tall run, you would pick up economic and quantity as well. Innovative, so... Yeah, uh, this campaign is... Eh, you know, I, I don't really have a lot to say for now. I'm sorry, boys, but uh, I'm just sort of puzzled at moments. Uh, no need to take a look at the missions right here. Decisions. You got nice policies. Um, Maybe this was a sort of a Diplo heavily playthrough. I don't know. Uh, GovCap under GovCap, obviously religion, uh, Protestant, by the way, everything converted except your Sagan bar. I don't know where that is, maybe something down here. Yeah, this, no, that's not it, but yeah, not a lot to say right there. Military, uh, 600k regiments, pretty large army, if I do say so myself, morale is good, discipline is okay, nice combat modifiers, uh, combat with this 40, no, no, no. Well, actually, if these stacks are split, then the, then they're good, so if this is like, you know, if two of these are one stack, then it's good. You know, because it's 40-40, but even then you want, you'd want it bigger, I guess. So, yeah. 16-420? Yeah, they, they have to be merged. They gotta be merged, right? If not, that's gonna suck. Uh, estates, lots of privileges active. No nobles, obviously. Max absolutism isn't relevant for this campaign. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about that over there. Now, yeah, HRE does, does exist? Does not exist? No, it doesn't exist. This is the HRE. Nice HRE, by the way. Commonwealth is the emperor, but... uh. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I didn't take a look at the government reforms. Uh, autocracy, okay. Compromise with the nobility, okay. Real favoritism, weird one, but decent, I guess. Cost of advisors, head of reform church goods, sustained discipline, good. Parliamentarianism, do we got the parliament? Yeah, we do. So, okay, then in that case, it's good. Administrative clergy, okay. Mercantilistic approach, good. Six books, good, good. Uh, right to petition, good. Yeah, okay, you know, government reforms, but... I'm still very puzzled by this campaign, man. Okay, let's take a look at the other things here. So let's go into the states tab. Obviously, everything stated, all cultures accepted. That's pretty good right there. Next, I actually want to go into the development tab and take... Yeah, look at this, man. Leipzig is at 200 devs. So two mega tall campaigns in a row. Look at how developed these provinces are. Jesus Christ. I mean, now taking a look at this, you can finally understand why the borders look like they do. So yeah, all of these provinces extremely highly dev. The lowest dev province is in fact uh, 23 development. Maybe there was a goal to get them all up to 30 or something like that. But look, man, how many monarch points have I spent on this? Let's take a look at Leipzig right here. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that, man. 63 dev right here. Jesus. Yeah, 63, 62. Wait, I was looking at something else. They're not... Dude, I was looking at the cost, my bad. <laughs> the lowest dev province is actually 3 St. Thomas. I don't know where that is. It's right there. Uh, but yeah, in that case, that's not a mega tall campaign, man. The, the dev is really high. Don't get me wrong. I was looking at the cost, my bad, boys. But uh, yeah, still super high dev provinces. Yeah, a lot of them still above 30. Yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah, the development is great. But even if even with uh, such heavy focus on development, you know, you can saw the, the Korea playthrough was pretty much just like this. Mega developing provinces, but, uh, you, you know, the Korea player owned all of this. Whereas uh, this player doesn't even own all of Germany. But maybe maybe it was going for modern day Germany borders. But even that, modern day Germany doesn't have Austria or Switzerland or or these provinces right here or, or this right here. So I really don't know, man. I really don't know. It's a, it's a tall campaign and it's pretty good for what it's trying to do. But 
I'm just not satisfied with these borders at all. There definitely could have been a lot more expansion, keeping the same level of development, still diving this much, but a lot more expansion as well. Now let's go into the buildings. I'm expecting to see buildings literally everywhere. Let's take a look at the stock exchanges. Yeah, built in all of the Roman provinces, if I say so myself. Town halls literally everywhere. That's great. Uh, counting house. But yeah, counting house is everywhere. That's awesome. Cathedrals everywhere. Manufactories everywhere. So definitely a heavy focus on buildings as well. So I, I, I am going to have to judge this as a tall campaign. I am going to have to judge it as that. Let's take a look at the timeline right here. Uh, Saxe Lauenburg, right? It's this green boy right here. So there we go. Saxe Lauenburg. Uh, let's see. A couple of years have passed, no expansion. There we go, expanding into Lüneburg, into Verden right here. That's looking pretty good. Pushing into Brunswick, Oldenburg. So yeah, a pretty typical H3 expansion for the first 30-ish years. Uh, there we go, Burgundy blew up, expanding into some of the free cities right here, which is uh, pretty nice. There we go, fighting Denmark even for Saxe Lauenburg. Yeah, pretty slow and steady expansion. It's almost been 100 years and... Uh, you know, the, the nation is still not looking that big. Let's actually speed it up. There we go. Handover form, by the way. Excellent. Uh, Still no expansion. Maybe expanding through vassals or something. Yeah, definitely vassals over here, as we can see, because they show up with your color. But, you know, slow and steady expansion. Doing lots of devving during this point, obviously. There we go. Even, even more expansion, which is uh, saying something, definitely. Taking one by one province. Knocking out some free cities, except for Dortmund. But there we go. Expansion in the south over here. I'm guessing, once again, through vassals. There we go. Connected the lands. Uh, less and less nations are left there we go now we're sort of ramping up a little bit right here as we jump into the late game fighting switzerland and hungary for some reason is over there massive venice that we got over here yeah some more expansion from germany uh in about the 1770s 1780s and yeah that's 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 pretty much how the game ended up being so you know i can respect it for what it is a tall campaign but really there is a lack of expansion and some weird-ish idea group picks that you, I guess, want to take earlier on so you can do more devving and stuff like that. But yeah, I even for what it is, a tall campaign, I, I still can't give this a 5, man. I Actually, I don't think I can even give it a 4. So I just the borders bo bother me way too much. I don't want to be too harsh here, but I don't want to be too generous either. For what it is... 3.5 or 4 man honestly let's 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 just leave it at at 4 i don't want to be too harsh since the borders and the ideas are pretty much the only thing that's bothering me so yeah that's been our little uh sex allowenberg to hand over to germany run in 1806 i'm gonna give it a 4 let's move on with byzantium all right let's jump into our final save game for the day this byzantium campaign in uh, 1543 by giambo x all right, all right, here we are in our little uh, Byzantium campaign, right here, almost 100 years since the start of the game, and honestly, this Byzantium is looking pretty decent, man, it's looking pretty decent, I don't really have a lot of negative uh, things that I can notice right off the bat, that's of course the first thing that I focus on, not the positive things, but uh, yeah, definitely a heavy focus over on Italy for the uh, early portion of the campaign, not something you would expect too much, right, because, you know, aggressive expansion, you don't really want to get into that with these guys until you, you know, sort of build your power base over here in the east that's that's usually how i go you know you start off from here push to there and here simultaneously and then just go around like this that's how i personally do it in my campaigns but i'm um, definitely a very nice focus on uh, italy earlier on not all of anatolia cleaned up but the mamluks have already been defeated so it's not like it's really a problem but you definitely actually want to get this done for a mission or something like that but uh yeah let's get into and grit right here going into the great powers list number one on the great powers list uh 600 dev more than spain which is looking really really strong so everything is looking legit right here in this regard going over into the court tab we've got you know decent rulers right here this guy's pretty old level four one and three advisors kind of weird all the way around maybe he's picking them for the modifiers instead of the levels but uh yeah okay ish i guess i would say maybe you would have a uh, level eh. Dude, they're really cheap, actually, but level 3 advisors, all of them by now? Eh, not too much to say about that. In the government tab, accepted and promoted cultures, you definitely want to, you know, get into this a little bit more. But actually, he went with the decision to convert all of this. So, yeah, things are looking pretty good as well. He's got Greco in southern Italy as well, already spawning, which is very nice. Uh, in the diplomacy tab, oh, he is coalition. This player is coalition. Let's see. Yeah. So this is what I was saying, right? You don't want to get into Italy this early on because these guys are going to do this. You sort of want to focus on this over here uh, during this time frame. Later, when the number of these guys shrinks, that's when you start pushing into this. But, uh, you know, if you went with my guide with the Naples opening, uh, Southern Italy is definitely legit for this point. He's even got Rome. But, uh, yeah, Northern Italy, maybe a little bit too early for this. Either way, going back to the diplomacy tab, I like to France, Portugal, and Russia. This coalition wouldn't declare, man. Yeah, no way. No way, but a pretty big coalition. Wallachia is a hereditary Pernoyar, and Sili is a regular one. Uh, yeah, okay, not really something you need to do with uh, guys that are this small, but 
not any negative things to say about that. Diplo reps not that high, pretty overextended, pretty good improved relations actually. Going over into the economy tab, making okay-ish money, actually pretty good, <laughs> very lots of bad tax modifiers, but I guess we're past the point almost where tax doesn't become that relevant, but decent income from trade, decent income from production. Uh, not a, a very heavy focus on the economy, I would say from just judging by this, but we'll see if I'm actually right or not. Losing lots of money to corruption, obviously because of coring, but um, yeah, actually that will be over 100 income, which actually is looking pretty good going over into the trade tab about 40 percent coming in from trade which is normal by this point in the game 10 10 goods produced is okay in the tech uh wait this is yeah yeah that's what i thought the tech should be a little better so you, you want to be 12 12 12 by now but i guess the focus is elsewhere maybe you got bad rulers or something so yeah not that far behind honestly you could be taking all of these new techs if you have the printing press no printing press hasn't spawned yet so yeah, you could take these. No need to wait, I guess. Maybe waiting for discounts, but whatever. Diplo admin, religious, very nice opening right there. Uh, I would say maybe religious for your fourth one, influence for your third one. Uh, doesn't really matter though. I'm, I'm liking this setup. Obviously a setup for a grand expansion campaign, a Roman Empire campaign or something like that. So initial idea group picks are very nice. Uh, going over into the missions, lots of missions up to here accomplished. Yeah, you definitely want to get into these right here for the Egypt ones. This is sort of the improving your nation branch. This is the religious branch right here. So yeah, missions are looking pretty good by this point of the game. That's, you know, what I would expect from the missions by now. Uh, these policies are active. The missionary strength, obviously you needed the diplomat, you needed as well. Um, expand the boss for straits. Yeah, lots of decisions that can't, that can be taken here that aren't. Uh, you know, you can click these. There's no downside to clicking these. Um, yeah, there we go. That's that. Almost at golf cap, but looking pretty stable. Honestly, I would say over 100 over extension. These are, wow, you took so much... He took this in one war, dude? That is so much, man. That is actually so much land in Northern Italy for one war. Wow. Ballsy, man. Ballsy. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, in the religion tab, obviously, everything is being converted. Let's see. Five missionaries. Come on. Activate them. Put them down here. Let them convert. Uh, obviously, you know, you want to core them up first, but that's why they're unconverted. But yeah, everything else is looking orthodox. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I expected to see. Very high patriarch authority. Got the icon of St. Nicholas active. In fact, it was... St. Nicholas just a day or two ago. Going over into the military tab, the decent discipline. Uh, morale is... Eh, actually, morale is okay for this point in the game. Uh, calf combat, you know, uh, galley combat. Yeah, looking pretty good right there. Naval force limit, army force limit. So this is combat with this 25 by now. Uh, actually, the armies are looking pretty good. Eh, maybe some wrong mergers here and there, but 25 for something is what you would have by this point in the game. I would have 25 for 10 by now so yeah not too far off of what you would want to have at this point in the game in the subject we got Wallachia and Scilly, Barbary Coast Company, Crimea Company, Egypt, Levant Company yeah I personally wouldn't trade company uh stuff in Alexandria or maybe I would trade company Crimea though but I definitely wouldn't trade company Alexandria and uh, Aleppo yeah these sort of you want to make states right here this is sort of gonna be the core of your nation later on and in the you know government tab oh that's actually pretty low crown ownership for now this is definitely a negative right here you definitely want to have it uh bigger than this by now but pretty standard uh things active here for all the estates lots of privileges to the cossacks as well but yeah definitely want to be seizing a lot more land here uh the the you know the um the nobles still in quite a lot so you would definitely be expecting to be uh, above 30 by this point in the game so definitely a negative right there uh yeah but but that's pretty much the only bad thing i found by this point of the game and i guess you would consider bad expanding into italy uh this early on but um yeah everything is looking pretty stable as well merchants crimea ragusa venice aleppo alexandria to constantinople yeah i guess you yeah you are collecting in venice by this point you could in fact make it your home node you already got 90 percent control yeah yeah you definitely want to flip your main trade node back to venice or maybe even general later on once you conquer stuff over here but uh yeah things are looking pretty good right there the merchants are in uh decent uh, locations let's just take a look at the government reforms right here Reformed Byzantine Monarchy obviously got the Senate active, which is a standard Reformed of Pornoyar system. Pretty good, uh, you know, unique one for biz. You could go with Restore the Master of Offices, but no need to expand Royal Court is great. However, this is a bad one for uh, uh, such a heavy religious-focused playthrough as biz, you know, Orthodox and stuff like that. You definitely want to go with Grant Land to the Monasteries for the Patriarch Authority and stuff like that. The theme system is excellent for Tier 5. Restore the Senate is perfect, and that's how far you've gotten in, um, in what you call it in the uh in the government reforms let me let me take a look at the states right here so everything over here is stated this is what's trade company obviously so i would just state this but trade company that i guess for the centers of trade or whatever but uh yeah let me take a look at autonomy here now autonomy could actually autonomy is looking pretty good yeah not a lot to say about that 
now let's go over into the uh development tab let me take a look at province dev a little bit um yeah sort by this not by cost obviously constantinople rome jerusalem yeah some of them have definitely been dev uh but yeah dev is actually looking really nice nice high development provinces now let's go into the buildings take a look at the marketplaces yeah you could build them in uh all of these provinces up to here but they're definitely already placed in the relevant areas courthouses yeah courthouses are obviously you know booming at this point in the game you definitely want to build them in the rest of the provinces where is the one in constantinople just kidding you don't really need one right there but uh yeah this is looking pretty good right here let me take a look at the workshops workshops built in pretty much most of the relevant provinces right here you're missing one right there a couple ones right here salt cloth yeah uh definitely want to build up some more workshops but you know the the thing with these buildings is they are progressing obviously this is not a finished campaign so even if everything that needs to be everywhere isn't there uh, things are looking pretty good. You definitely want to have more churches than this as biz. Uh, developing tax early on helps as well. Barracks, some here and there. Manufactories, obviously. Oh, some of them actually exist. Yeah, or do they? Yeah, they do. No, that was the fort. There's the... No. Yeah, we do got them. Or we don't. Yeah, we do. Okay, nice. Some manufactories over there as well. Pretty nice. So the buildings for this size right here are uh, pretty uh, pretty uh, satisfactory, if I do say so myself. So this is what Biz is looking like. Yeah, the only negative things I could find so far are pretty much the lack of Crownland right here uh, and the maybe expanding over here. So instead of conquering this right here, you should have focused over here. So those are the negative things that I have to say for now. Everything else is looking pretty good, honestly. Now let's take a look at the timeline right here. Uh, let's go with this speed since it's not that long. There we go, expansion over here into Epirus a little bit. Uh, there we go. Boom. There's the war with the Ottomans. Nice expansion. Fighting Serbia as well. Perfect right here. Expansion in southern Italy as well. There we go. A little bit more into the Balkans right here. Still not fighting the Ottomans again. There we go. There's the second or third war with the Ottomans. Finishing off stuff right there. There's expansion into Tunis as well. Jumping over through the Mamluks, so to say. Fighting the Mamluks as well. More expansion in the Balkans. More expansion over here uh, in the Anatolia region. There we go. There's another war with the Mamluks. Taking massive coastline chunks right there expansion in northern Italy. there it is now the next war is over here yeah fighting the mamluks again and now we should see uh that right there and uh that's that so uh yeah very very nice run as byzantium so far uh about a hundred ish years into the game the advice i would have for this campaign is uh yeah cool off on expanding over here in europe a little bit all right focus on togur tafilalt you should definitely fight Spain uh, later on with the help of your allies to start expanding over here so you can reach Morocco as well. Focus on wiping out the Mamluks. Take care of the Mashriq region. You know, if you're not going strictly for a Roman Empire run, you could definitely continue on this way as well. But I don't think a lot of players do that. So, uh, yeah, things are looking really good. I just hold off on expansion here. Focus heavily on the Mamluks. You know, fight some of their allies maybe to reset your truce with them. You need to fight QQ as well. Focus on the North African guys. Lay off of Italy for a little while. You could maybe push into Wallachia or Poland right here or something like that. Georgia too, definitely Georgia too. If you make uh, Muscovy, you know, not... Yeah, there we go. You could declare on Georgia right now. So, yeah, that's my advice. And definitely work on seizing land more often. Seize land even if it triggers rebels because you do need to get above 30 by this point in the game. Uh, some of these things, even though you think it's not hurting you, the tax and the monthly autonomy change actually in the early portion of the game are, uh, you know, not that good right there. So, uh, yeah, everything is looking pretty good. Honestly, aside from the fact that you shouldn't really expand nearly that much and you should focus more here and work on the uh, on the crownland ownership. But yeah, that's been our Byzantium campaign. And for this 100 year campaign as Byzantium, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, this definitely isn't a five right here. But uh, for what has been accomplished in these 100 years with some negative things that have happened, once again, just like the Germany campaign, I'm feeling a 3.5 to a four. But let's be generous with this one as well, just like we were with the last one and give this a four as well. I guess I'm in a good mood today. And that has been our uh, final save game of the day. And uh, yeah, after wrapping up that Korea one, that uh, Germany one, and this Biz one, we are done for our three save games for today. Obviously, you know, there are a lot more lined up over in the Discord, all 136 save games. If you want to submit yours, I may eventually get to it. I honestly don't know. Uh, first come, first serve, only one submission per person. But uh, yeah, join the Discord and drop in the save games for vid channel, and I might get to review it eventually. But um, yeah, those were our three save games for today. Honestly, pretty fun ones, all of them. Two tall, very tall uh, focus campaigns and one biz campaign honestly that's uh that's all a man needs uh from a save game review video but uh yeah definitely let me know in the comments below mostly if you want to see these videos more often and uh that's all i have to say about that very nice campaigns today a five a four and a four even though some of them were weird ones looking at 
new Germany campaign, but uh, honestly, I'm pretty satisfied with them. And that's all I have to say about that. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.